Hi, Ingrid. It's great to uh, have you here at SOCAP today. Um, are you ready to get started? Yeah. Hi, Carrie. Very <laughs> excited to be with you today. Great. Um, all right. I have a few questions to ask you. Um, the first one that I'm really curious to hear a little bit from you about is what exactly is impact investing and how does it differ from ESG and maybe what is ESG? That's a great question and it's one that I get asked often because there still seems to be confusion between ESG, sustainability and impact. So basically a sustainable company is one that seeks to maximize long-term value by taking into account all of the material ESGs. So, you know, impact investing goes one step beyond ESG and sustainability integration, meaning that risk mitigation and doing no harm are already a part of it. So I see it as the last step in responsible investing and as by measuring a company's output and assessing its net benefit, investors have the ability to quantify how their capital allocation has benefited, be it the society or the environment. Those are great, really good starting points. And then um, I think to maybe take it the next step further, why then should investors consider an impact fund? Many reasons, but um, I'd like to share a video with you before we <laughs> Great. go further. Not even a week into 2020, and already this is a year no Australian will forget. We've watched as the fires have rampaged through the bush, a Herculean battle to stop the inferno by pilots whose skill is only matched by their bravery. We've tried to keep up with that fight as it's ranged across hundreds of miles. This was the scene in the community of Manana. This is what they're dealing with all across southeastern Australia. They're using every asset they've got, planes, helicopters, fire engines. The fire's ripped through here. This property at the back is gone. We've just talked to the owner. He's distraught. He doesn't know what's saved and what hasn't. His entire life possessions are inside. The wind suddenly veers to the south. The fire switches direction and our only way out is now a treacherous gauntlet of fallen trees and flames. They call Australia the lucky country. Right now, it feels cursed. And I've been living here permanently since 74, and we've had other fires, but this is totally different. This year. Let's just move closer to home to California. Here you have uh, the Ferguson fire, also known as the Yosemite fire. It started in July. It was not contained until August, and the result was 100,000 acres that were gone. The Apple fire of 2020 started by a diesel burning vehicle, another 33,000 vehicles, another 330,000 hectares of land gone. Created a plum of smoke so big that it actually created its own wind. On this slide, you can see the Plastics as a Problem Institute, a Californian-based environmental organization is suing 10 companies for which it claims that account for a majority of plastic pollutions we are seeing today. And among them are many household names such as Coxie, such as Coke and Pepsi. Climate change is the defining challenge of our times. And as we have just seen in the video at the beginning, we have experienced record-breaking temperature and a severe drought, and this has fueled a series of massive bushfires. 2020 was one of the warmest years on record. No ocean, no life. Yet every year, we dispose of 8 million metric tons of plastic into the ocean. Just to illustrate what this means to you, it would be the equivalent of throwing 57,000 whales into the ocean. Between 1970 and 2016, the global wildlife population has fallen by some 68%. And what's our new reality? It's that the only way forward is sustainable capitalism. And this is why impact investing is so important. And we consider it the future of investing because it's about creating value for all. 
the stakeholders and not only the minorities. Can you tell me next, what has contributed to this recent increase in demand for impact funds? Well, COVID has caused a paradigm shift in collective consciousness, and it has identified numerous critical issues, such as the need to build resilience across the healthcare system, food and water, security, supply chains. It's really exposed the weakness in the supply chains that we are experiencing on a global level. It has also put the spotlight on the most vulnerable in our society, the worker rights, as well as the climate change. And this has been a big boost for impact investing and the importance of the SDGs as they give investors the ability to map and monitor what these global challenges are. And it also allows them to target investments that where they can allocate capital to purposeful companies that generate value by providing innovative solutions to these critical issues. So at once you can map, monitor, and identify how your capital has contributed to making the world a better place. Could you give us a couple of examples of um, some of the themes there then? Sure. So in our fund, we focus on nine themes that we believe are addressing the most critical needs of the society and the planet. And I'll give you an example of health and well-being, which is in alignment with SDG3. And this is one of the mega trends that we have been playing. And we have been investing for a while in what I call the persistent pandemics, which come at a huge cost to the society, both monetary and in terms of loss of life. So if you take non-communicable diseases, such as cancer, respiratory disease, cardiovascular, and diabetes. These four diseases account for 70% of the global deaths annually. Huge. And unfortunately, all of us have been affected directly or indirectly by those. Diabetes has been our main focus, given that it has the highest incidence globally. Today, there is half a billion people globally that suffer from diabetes. This number is set to double in the next 20 to 30 years. And the annual cost already today is at $800 billion. Absolutely huge. We have invested the Dexcom. It's a medical device company which allows for real-time glucose monitoring. It's a medical device that has had a huge impact on the society by improving the patient's quality of life through better disease management as well as, as well as generating cost savings in the process. Um, let's see a Dexcom patient um, in this video. I think that's a great illustration of the huge positive impact that this company has had. I don't really remember a time before having to manage diabetes. I was diagnosed with type one diabetes when I was four years old. They told me that I was gonna have to do this for the rest of my life. It was a huge unknown. We had no idea what we were going to be facing. We would be constantly checking her blood sugar. If her numbers are too high or too low, she could have a seizure or go into a coma. We were scared, but we didn't want it to stop her from doing anything that she wanted to do. As I got into middle school, that's where my love of sports kind of started. But exercise will bring your blood sugar way down. We had to watch what she was going to eat so that you know how to dose her insulin. We both got really good at math. I would go and sit at every single basketball practice, pacing up and down the court, trying to get her to check her numbers. We thought we counted it perfectly, and suddenly your blood sugar is just tanking on you. I was going really high and then going really low. We were on a roller coaster. I just wanted to play basketball, but there was a million things running through my mind. I know it's been hard for Jordan. She can't just go and do whatever she'd like to do without thinking about this. I had heard about continuous glucose monitoring and Dexcom. Once she tried it, it was such a help to all of us. The Dexcom is a small wearable device that sends my numbers to my phone and a receiver, checks my glucose readings every five minutes on a graph, 
and it also tells me which direction they're headed and how quickly or slowly they're headed that direction. Instead of doing damage control, now I'm making decisions real time based off of what my body's doing. Knowing my numbers all day is basically like having a game plan set in motion so I'm able to go out and not think about it and just glance in the numbers right there. Now that she's going to be going off to college away from home, it's very nerve-wracking for me as a mom. I share my numbers with my parents and they can see the same graph and the same information that I'm getting. Sometimes I can see my graph going awry and I know that any minute I'm gonna get a text from my mom asking, what did you eat, what did you do? <laughs> it makes us feel a lot more comfortable no matter how far away she is. I mean, you always worry, <laughs> for sure, but this is the most sleep I've had since she was four years old. I have way more control over my numbers and my life. I designed my first tattoo, it means I'm greater than the highs and the lows. I feel more confident in my decisions and I can just hang out and not think about it for a little while and be a normal person. Ingrid, one of the things that we are really focusing on this year with SOCAP um, is action and ensuring that we are calling people to action. What would you say to those that are perhaps still in doubt or, you know, your piece of action? Carrie, I surely hope uh, I haven't left that many still in doubt after illustrating and explaining that the direction we should be making as a society is the one that is towards, you know, not only thinking about profit, but purpose as well. And this is where impact investing plays a crucial role. But I want to emphasize being an impact investor does not mean foregoing, you know, the financial wealth creation. And if you look at the way we have been investing and what our fund has done, we have actually defied two big myths. And the first one is that there is a trade-off between investing for good and making money. And the second one is that you need to have exposure to the FANG sector if you want to make money. So we have delivered annual returns of almost 14% and we have beaten the benchmark by 7%. And this is without any FANGs. And the reason for this is that our companies are providing products and services that are addressing world's critical needs. So the call for action that I see is allocate capital to those businesses that are going to help resolve these huge problems in alignment with you and SDGs. Thank you, Ingrid, for being here today. And um, thank you for all the work that you are doing. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you.